So, I am here with Michelle Bryan from Meals on Meals, and I'm Linda Master, as most of you know, with Prescott E! News. And we're going to talk about Meals on Wheels and an awesome opportunity that's available um, really soon. So, Michelle, why don't you start talking? Just explain what's happening with Meals on Wheels first. Okay. Um, well, Meals on Wheels uh, delivers a warm, nutritional meal to um, people who are homebound. Uh, most of them are elderly, but some are disabled. And um, the criteria is either they are unable to go get food or they're unable to prepare food. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how many how many people do you have? Are you serving meals to right now? Over two hundred uh, each week or each day, actually. So we serve quite a lot. We um, deliver to Prescott and Prescott Valley. Wow. And do you have um, volunteers that deliver the meals, or how does that work? Yeah, we have about one hundred and seventy five volunteers who help pack and prepare the meals in the morning, and then we have drivers who go out every day and deliver the meals to fifteen different routes. Wow, that's quite an undertaking. And you're the director, I take it? No, I'm the um, development coordinator. Oh, okay. And so what kind of meals do you serve? Well, we serve, um, yesterday we had um, roast beef with mashed potatoes and vegetables. So it's usually there's a protein, there's a carb, and there's vegetables. So, and do you prepare all the food there? It, and it's a... Um, the adult center on Rosser Street, isn't it? Yeah, it's the Rowley P. Simmons uh, uh, Center, and the adult um, center is there. And we have our facilities, our offices are there, and then we have a large dining room and a kitchen. So we have a chef and a prep cook who actually make the food in the morning, and then the volunteers help um, put it together. And then we have, we have um, lunch serving there from 11.15 to 12.45 every day. So I'm assuming you don't get a lot of money like say from the city of Prescott um, for but this has got to be expensive to prepare these meals and deliver them and, and how does that work? It is expensive and there's not a lot of underwriting to cover the cost for all of the meals so we do um, rely heavily on support from um, grants, foundations, sponsorships and donors, individual donors. Um, some of our um, clients are able to pay for their meals but a lot of them um, are unable to. Um, some are able to get it subsidized from the government, and the ones who are unable to fit either of those criteria, um, we, we cover the cost for them, so they go, don't go without a meal. So if, if they were paying for it, how much do they usually pay per meal? It would be $7. $7 per meal, okay. Um, so, and you also do fundraisers, is that correct? We do. So tell us about this next fundraiser that's coming up. This looks like it'd be a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. So, um, one of our volunteers donated two tickets to see the Rolling Stones on May 7th um, at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale. And um, we just kind of sat on it for a little bit and like, what are we going to do with this? And yeah. So what we did is we purchased a room at the um, Clarendon Boutique Hotel downtown and we um, also have a $100 Visa gift card, and the volunteer who donated the tickets also bought a parking pass. So it's an awesome package for somebody who wants to go down to Phoenix, go see the Rolling Stones, stay the night in downtown, and hang out the next day. And how do people, um, so you're raffling the tickets, correct? We are raffling, yeah. So um, it is one ticket for $25, three tickets for $60, or six tickets for $100. So obviously the price goes down if you purchase more, and you can purchase it on our um, website, which is uh, mealsonmeals.com. And do you, um, on your, is it, can they only purchase it through the website, or can they come in and purchase it at the Roley um, P. Simmons. Yep, they center. sure can. They can they can call on the phone, and I can do a credit card over the phone, or they can come into the center as well. And so, I mean, you're you're talking a whole package. I mean, you know, just a whole great even evening stay, and um, so this should be really a lot of fun for people. I know, right? I think so too. And. Um, this was just kind of fell into our laps, and we thought, wow, we should do something like this every year. This is a really great opportunity, and for 25 bucks to be able to go see the Rolling Stones. It's for two people, actually, two right? People, yeah. Because you have two tickets, isn't it's that correct? two right? tickets, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so. And so the, um, the raffles will be on sale through April 26th, um, and it closes at 3 p.m., and then we will pull a winner, and they'll be notified by 4 o'clock that day. Oh, that day, okay, because I thought it was um, 
Okay. Yeah, four o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So there we go. And um, so, folks, if if you really want to help support a great cause, plus go to a wonderful event, this is the one that you need to, you know, get your ticket for and see if you can win this. And um, tell us about some of the other fundraisers you do throughout the year. Uh, the next one we have coming up is called Master Chef, and Master Chef is a um, really unique dining experience um, that we collaborate with U.S. Vets Prescott. And so they have a culinary program that local veterans go through and it helps them get trained in the culinary arts to um, have jobs in the restaurant industry. And so um, what we do is we reach out to local chefs and uh, we have one local chef that works, that cr comes up with the meal. So uh, this year it'll be a five course meal. And then the veterans in the culinary program kind of act as sous chefs and prep cooks mm -hmm. with that chef. So now they're learning how to cook for a large amount of people they're learning new techniques and they're just kind of getting um, so so there's a so not only is it a fundraiser and we'll talk a minute about you know how you get tickets for that when it is and stuff but it's also a great opportunity for the um, vets in the culinary program at US Vets yeah it is. it so. is it's a really great program that they have and they do a lot of catering uh, locally as well so when does that take place? It's going to be on Saturday, May 18th, and it's actually in our facility, in our dining room, and um, it's from 5 to 8 p.m., and this year's chef is going to be um, Robert Davis. He's the chef at Alta Vista Senior Living. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And um, what are the, what's the price for the tickets for that? It's $75, and it is a um, five-course meal, and it is going to be paired with um, alcoholic beverages and maybe a non-alcoholic beverage as well mm -hmm. and the, um, each course as they come out the chef will come out and explain um, where the food came from how it was prepared and talk a little bit about it and this year's um, theme is just keeping it local so he's going to have a lot of local resources that he's going to use the food and are you having any additional speakers or anything with that or is the main focus just on the food um, the main focus is on the food, but there's also um, the emphasis of, of Meals on Wheels and the U.S. Vets. And so um, they will come out and talk a little bit about um, our programs. And then um, this year we're going to incorporate a little bit more about veterans and um, let them, some of them speak. Okay. And now suppose you have a loved one who needs help from Meals on Wheels or you yourself need help from Meals on Wheels. How do they go about signing up for your program? So they can call our office, and then um, at our office, they'll go through an intake questionnaire. So it's just the basic questions of um, kind of what's going on with them, what their needs are. Um, it, we ask some really specific questions about you know how to enter their home. If, are they going to be able to be there? Do they have pets? Because we also have a, a pet program called Animals, where if they have pets, we bring pet food for them as well. Oh, that's awesome. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I assume that's cats and dogs yep. food. Um, probably not iguana food or anything like that. <laughs> no. So um, and generally we can get people on um, started the next day. Oh, that's great. What about if they have um, specific dietary needs? That we can't really accommodate because we have to cook food for so many people and right. it's hard to be that specific. But we do have a great program with YRMC, the um, Yavapai Regional Medical Center. So they have um, quite a few meals that cater to dietary restrictions. And mm -hmm. so if we do have somebody that has something specific, our drive, our volunteer drivers will go and pick those up and bring those to the home. Oh, wow. So that's great. Um, so tell us about anything else that you think people should know about Meals on Wheels. Um, I know it's one question that always comes up is what happens on the weekends or holidays or when it's snowing. And right. So we do only deliver meals Monday through Friday, but if there are people who need meals on the weekends, we have frozen meals that are previous meals that were packaged and frozen, and we deliver them on Fridays so they have meals over the weekend. That's great. We do the same thing for holidays. We prepare and then the drivers take out additional meals, and then when it's snowing, they have snow day meals. So it's a boxed uh, kind of shelf food mm -hmm. just in case their power goes out as well right and so when it's snowing it's not safe for our drivers to be driving around but we um, let our clients know that utilize those food so you've delivered <coughs> like 
a couple days in advance mm -hmm. if you know a snowstorm is coming or yeah. something along those lines. Yes. And that's great. And sometimes we don't need to use it, but recently we had to use all of the snow wheels. Yeah, I bet you would have. Um, so people, what if they want to volunteer? What if they want to help um, you deliver or help you prepare the food? Yeah, so um, our volunteer coordinator, Billy Jo, is, um, she will talk, tell people what our needs are. Um, so we do have volunteer drivers. We have volunteers in the kitchen. We have a thrift store, so we um, take uh, small items. We can't accommodate large furniture or large appliances, but we have a little thrift store that's run by our volunteers. And then also when uh, people come to our dining room to eat, we have volunteers at the front desk that help check them in. Okay, so where's your thrift store at? It's, so everything's at the Raleigh P. Simmons, so okay. our address is 1280 East Roster Street, so once you enter into that building, we're to the left. Okay, and um, and you have the dining room. I've been in that kitchen, it's beautiful, you know, so I bet you can prepare a lot of meals pretty efficiently we there. So um, what if they just want to donate money or goods or something to your organization? How do they do that? So they can um, either come into the office or donate online if it's uh, cash, but they can come into the office. We're there um, from 8.30 to 3.30 is our uh, normal hours. Mm -hmm. And um, if they want to come in and just even find out more, they can come in during those hours too, I'm sure. They certainly can, and we're more than happy to um, give you a tour and show you around, show you our kitchen and our thrift store and just kind of explain the process because a lot of people don't really understand how it works and the machine that um, seals the, the food is actually pretty interesting and just the, the whole process is really fascinating. So how long have you worked for them? Um, I've been there for about a year and a half. And tell us about some of your daily duties. Um, well, uh, a lot of what I do is donor management and sponsor management and um, putting together fundraisers and just supporting the organization in general. And are you enjoying it? I am, yeah. I am. I have a nonprofit background and I feel that usually if I give my time every day to a job, it should almost feel like volunteering and mm -hmm. I want to make a difference. That's good. And how long have you lived in Prescott? Did you move here to take the job or were you already living here? No, I'm a California transplant. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where, whereabouts in California? Long Beach. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I've been in Long Beach for the past maybe 25 years and then I came up here about two years ago. So that was kind of a big change. Yeah, it was. Do you miss the beach? No, I don't. I don't miss the beach. Um, I guess I kind of miss more of the culture and diversity and more things to do in public transportation. <laughs> uh huh. But at least it's small around here, so getting around in the Prescott area is not that difficult. No, it's not. And it's so beautiful out here. I love uh -huh. not being on a freeway every day and just the slower pace. It's a lot more peaceful. Right. So, okay, anything you want to add? I don't think so. So we're going to go ahead and I think and, and sign off, say okay. goodbye to our Facebook Bye. friends. Thank and, you so much um, for having me on. Yeah, we'll be talking soon, I'm sure, and you can keep us updated. Do you have a limited number of tickets for the Rolling Stones um, raffle? We don't. Okay, so. However many are sold or sold. There we go. Yeah. Well, this sounds like fun, and um, if you guys like the Rolling Stones, you ought to go get the ticket. Yeah. You know, buy your raffle tickets, because if you win, it's the best opportunity ever. So, thank okay. you. Thanks. Bye, Facebook.